When we think of dangerous magic, there's only one name that pops up in our mind. Yes, it's none other than Aaron Crow. And there's nothing better than watching all his dangerous acts at once. Hello and welcome back. Today we are presenting the compilation of Aaron's most famous magic reveal from our previous videos. So, let's get started. The first trick, the blindfolded sword trick. This trick, performed by Aaron Crow, is quite possibly the most dangerous trick performed on talent shows around the world. Known for being a famous mentalist, here's what he did. He first calls upon a few spectators and one of the judges on stage to start performing his stunts involving sharp objects. For his act, Aaron picks up a burning candle and drops hot liquid wax onto his closed eyes, thus sealing them totally shut. He then blindfolds himself with three different materials, i.e. the white gauze, followed by a black tape, and finally the aluminum foil over his head. This was enough to convince the audience members and the judges that he was not able to see anything. Thereafter, he goes on to use various sharp objects, including a sword, to first chop off the objects being held by the spectators. And then finally, slices a pineapple off Howie Mandel's head perfectly. So, how was he able to perform this act so dangerous? Well, here's the secret. Now, you'd think how come Howie agreed to this act, which was also a huge risk to his life? Obviously, it's a pretty classic Hollywood secret in which Howie was already informed of the act. Otherwise, why would anyone risk their life? Also, the act was practiced several times with stand-ins, along with the producers of the show giving their approval to perform the same, only after getting to know the key elements of the trick to make sure nothing goes wrong on stage. Now, coming to the secret, the trick consists of two parts. First, the burning candle wax, and second, the blindfolded part. So, how did Aaron's eyes survive the melting wax? Obviously, the candle wax can be very hot, and you should never try this at home or anywhere else. Also, if you see this graph, it shows how much damage our skin suffers when exposed to high temperature. So any wax which has a melting point below 50 degrees Celsius would not damage our skin, if the exposure duration is very short. Here, the liquid wax you see must be paraffin wax or bayberry wax, which has a low melting point. Also, if you observe Aaron, he raises his hand and holds the burning candle quite far away from his eyes. So, this gets enough time for the liquid wax to travel, and as you know, it only takes a few seconds for the wax to melt off and harden completely. Thereafter, he had enough time to open his eyes inside the blindfold while it was still warm and malleable. And even if the wax did cool, it was just a thin layer of wax which he easily scratched away from his face. So, this is how he kept his eyes safe inside. Now, for the next part, how did he slice off that pineapple? Well, his eyes were all safe and he was able to see through the covering. Otherwise, the show would never let anyone perform this dangerous act with him blindfolded and not able to see. But how was he able to see through the layers? Well, he did wrap the white gauze and the black tape followed by the foil. But there's a trick to these props. They were not secured properly around the head, and the way he put all the stuff on his eyes was just a trick. Now, Aaron's a perfect illusionist, and if you check his left hand index finger, you can see his finger sneaking and pulling down the blindfold. At the same moment, he wraps a silver foil around his head which conceals the finger movement underneath. So the gauze is just like an eye mask which can be lifted and back down again. But what about the outer covering of foil? Obviously, the white gauze and black tape were a perfect covering which hit his eyes and he couldn't see through. But the foil you see on his head is not an aluminum foil, but a transparent material known as silver window tint, which is mostly applied on car windows. It's a one-way reflective glass material from which he could easily see through. So, he wraps around two layers of that tint, one at the front and the other one at the back of his head. And he separated them while wrapping it around his head. And now you know it, his vision is not blocked and he can see through the blindfold and goes about cutting the objects with quite ease. But still, isn't swinging a sword above a person's head very dangerous? Well it is, but the sword you see was a gimmick sword, which might even be just plastic. 
and the pineapple placed on Howie's head was pre-cut to almost 90 to 95 percent, and thereafter only needed a small force to slice it apart. Also, the golf-shaped metal bar to the right of his face is almost three inches, which means the sword would just rebound and not hurt him, in case he missed his target. Finally, while removing the foil, he puts back the gauze to its original position to end this amazing act which left the audience and judges gasping for nothing. The second trick, the bow and arrow trick. Here's what he did on America's Got Talent and many other shows which scared everyone around. By pointing laser light onto the judges panel, Aaron first calls upon two judges on stage to be his volunteers for the trick. He then asks Heidi, one of the judges, to take out her ring and be ready for his next move. Thereafter, he takes out an apple and using a knife, pierces it through its center. He puts Heidi's ring inside that apple and then closes it. Once the ring is secured, Aaron instructs the guest judge to stand behind Heidi. He also hands him a black wooden tray with a nail inserted on it. Now, as the guest judge stands behind Heidi, he holds a wooden tray on her head that is supporting the apple and the ring. Aaron then walks around the stage, reveals the target object, and takes out an arrow. He then points the bow and arrow with a laser light through the crowd, which invokes a lot of fear. Aaron then begins to spin in circles and, all of a sudden, he shoots the arrow, and what do we see? The apple is instantly cut in half. Not only did Aaron shoot the apple, the arrow even picked up a ring inside the apple on the way and landed on the target board. So, how did he do it? Well, to begin with, you should never try this sort of stuff at home or anywhere else. Now, coming to the secret, it's pretty obvious that no arrow was shot, and all you saw in the act was just an illusion. Also, why would the producers of the show put someone's lives at risk? So, from the pure perspective of entertainment and illusion, the producers of the show are told what the contestants are going to do before the act to make sure they have the dangerous stunts sorted out. Also, if you see carefully, it was not a continuous shot when the arrow was fired. It was like one frame the bow releases, one frame the apple is cut in half, and in one frame the arrow hits the target. This implies that at every stage, there's a mechanism which made this act possible. Now, as there was no arrow shot, how did the arrow end up on the target board? Well, both the bow and the arrow used for the act were gimmicked. Also, if you see here, the laser flashlight is coming out of the bow and is used for the purpose of aiming at the target, which the viewers thought so. However, its main purpose was to hide the secret hidden inside the bow. Yes, the secret lies in that bow, and also the arrowhead didn't go past beyond the bow and only the laser light went through. Also, this laser light created the illusion that the arrowhead was present there, and Aaron did shoot it when the light turned off. Now you'd ask, if there was no arrow shot, then what about this arrow? Where did it go? Well, as we said before, the arrow he picked up is a gimmick arrow, made up of a string with a feather at the end of it, to make it look like a real arrow. Also, hidden inside the handle of the bow is a cylindrical reel, and the string was connected onto that spring-loaded reel. And now you must have got it. When Aaron fires the shot, he releases the loose end of the string as it rolls into the hidden reel. But what about the arrow at the target board? Well, the arrow that appeared after the shot was already placed inside the leg of the target board all this while. It was hidden behind the black cloth using a spring mechanism. Here you can see that there's an opening in the cloth where the spring-loaded arrow was resting vertically against the board. Now, when triggered by a remote, the spring-loaded arrow pops out of the opening to its horizontal position. Also, notice the angular movement of the arrow when it vibrates after hitting the target. Now, this isn't the movement of the arrow hitting straight at the target. This confirms that the arrow popped out from the opening below. Also, the arrow at the target had Heidi's ring. Where did it come from? Is it a fake ring? No, it was Heidi's actual ring, as she would have easily noticed it if it was a fake one. Now for this part, we also need to look at the apple. After Aaron pierces the apple, you can see he digs the apple in such a way that its one side hole is bigger than the other side. Now he puts the ring inside the smaller hole, which convinces everyone that the ring is placed tightly inside and cannot be taken out easily. 
but as you know, there's a bigger hole at the other end. And during this moment, when he covers the center portion of the apple, the ring is actually pushed out through the bigger hole, which he conceals using his right hand thumb. Also, when he is seen placing the apple, the ring is hidden in his left hand fist. Now you know it. The ring is in Aaron's hand, and during the moment when he adjusts the target board, he puts that ring over the arrow, with his hand hidden behind the board and concealed using a black cloth. But there's one question still unanswered. How did the apple split in pieces? Well, the tray on which the apple was placed had a built-in mechanism at its bottom. A spring-loaded knife was placed underneath which moved from left to right when triggered by a remote. Now, this made the apple to split perfectly in parts as the knife came out through the opening under the apple. And this is how the apple was cut in half. So, the whole act was perfectly synchronized using a button hidden inside the bow and was triggered by Aaron just at the right time, which made this awesome illusion possible. The third trick, the paper bags and knife trick. Aaron Crow, the magician known to scare the hell out of everyone, this time around performed a very dangerous knife trick. As usual, he calls his favorite judge Howie on stage to be his volunteer for the trick. Now, there are four paper bags placed on stage, and after asking Howie about his choice, he places the knife underneath the second bag with its sharp blade pointing upwards. He then randomly mixes up the position of those bags quite a few times without Howie and anyone else noticing. Thereafter, he also tells Howie to exchange the position of the bags without him noticing. Now, Aaron tells Howie to choose which two boxes he should smash his hand down onto by slamming a large hammer onto a pillar. Howie gets the first two choices right, and now there are only two bags left. But this time around, he even calls Simon on stage for the most dangerous part of the trick. The trick was so hard to watch that Mel even pressed the red buzzer to stop the act. Thanks, Mel. After Howie chose the red bag on the left, Simon was about to slam his hand down when Aaron stopped him and made him smash his hand onto the other bag. The other bag was all safe, as Simon was saved by Aaron to end this terrifying act. So, how did Aaron know which bag had the knife in it? The first and foremost thing is that you should never try this stuff at home or anywhere else. Now, regarding the bags, Aaron is a very clever magician and he knew which paper bag contained the knife all along. Obviously, all the paper bags look similar, but it's quite possible to make one bag stand out from the other and this is what Aaron did. He made a unique crease on each of the paper bags before putting the knife underneath the bag. The crease could be anything which only he can see, like his fingerprints, a pattern on the bag, or something else, and is hidden away from the camera. Also to make this act safe for the judges, Aaron relied on another method to make this act a success. Otherwise, why would the producers of the show allow such a dangerous act to take place had it gone wrong? The other way is that, if you see, while Aaron was moving the bags, he could clearly notice the weight differences in the bags. Hence, the bag with the knife would have more weight than all the other bags. So clearly, this would allow him to identify which one of the bags had the knife in it. The heavier bag theory is safer and easier, but either way, this trick works quite well. Now, some of you'd think, what if Howie stopped at the bag where the knife was? How would he cover that? Only one bag contains the sword, so when Howie hits the hammer, Aaron can either do it exact or he can add a little delay, allowing him to move to another bag since he already knows the bag. Also, when only two bags were left, it doesn't matter when Howie slams the hammer, because either the magician is going to stop Simon's hand like he did here, or he's going to smash straight down. Finally, the only thing that was sure is that Aaron was, after all, going to save Simon and impress us all. So finally, Aaron Crow's last trick on our list. The Dangerous Cargo Box Trick Aaron Crow the magician known for his terrifying tricks performed a game of chance trick which had Howie concealed in one of the four huge cargo boxes lifted in air. He then asks Heidi and Mel B to choose one of the four blocks. Their choices were box number one and three, after which Aaron chops a rope suspended above each box, thus destroying the boxes totally. Finally, Simon hesitates and stays with the box number two. Aaron then chops off the rope which Simon didn't choose, and fortunately, Howie was all safe, hidden under the remaining box which Simon stayed with. So, how did he do it? Well, here's the secret. 
The back of all the blocks were uniquely marked and the difference was very minor. Only Aaron could easily identify the difference. So he knew which number each block had, even though the blocks were flipped over. Now he obviously knew that Howie was in box number two. Coming to the free choice, no matter which block the judges select, he would either grab the block they chose or the block they didn't, and it would work for him either way. Assuming if Mel B and Heidi grabbed the number two, then he would have simply used the two blocks they didn't choose. Finally, when Simon chose the block Howie was in, how come Aaron did not crush that box? Well, the fact that Aaron stayed silent helped his case. So here, he didn't speak to ask Simon whether the chosen number two he wants to stay with is for kill or to save Howie. Now, since Simon tells that he'll stay with number two, so Aaron convinced everyone that Simon wants to destroy box number four. If it was the other way around, and suppose Howie was in box number four, then Aaron would have changed his tactic and instead crushed box number two to always save Howie. So guys, hope you enjoyed the compilation of Aaron's most dangerous magic reveal of all time. Which trick scared you the most? And name any other magician whose video compilation you would like us to create. Let us know in the comments below.